Meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen hier im Oscar von Miller Forum. Heute zu unserem Abend BIM in China. Ich begrüße Herrn Professor Ma sehr herzlich. Welcome to Munich, to the Oscar von Miller Forum. It's a great honor and a pleasure to have you here, Professor Ma, for this presentation of the status of BIM in China. Welcome. BIM ist natürlich auch viel Technik und wenn Sie mich jetzt hier sehen vor einem Schwanenmikrofon plus so ein Handmikrofon, dann liegt es nicht daran, dass wir der deutschen Technik nicht trauen, sondern dass wir einerseits die Kommunikation mit dem Ding, glaube ich, innerhalb des Raumes haben und es ist, glaube ich, eine Premiere, it's a first, that we are streaming your presentation via Facebook to all the members of the construction industry and everybody else who wants to listen. Und alles, was in Streaming geht, geht eben jetzt erstmal über dieses Mikrofon. Ihnen und vor allem auch den Studenten der Bauingenieurwissenschaften und ich begrüße hier auch unseren neuen Professor Herrn Obergrieser, OTH Regensburg, mit seinem ersten Masterkurs ist klar, von was wir sprechen, aber ich möchte es nochmal in den Rahmen stellen. Als Bauindustrie, als Bauwirtschaft insgesamt und äh, das erlauben Sie mir, dass man einfach nochmal ganz kurz in die Historie geht. Bauwirtschaft und Innovation, ich mache es jetzt ganz kurz, bedeutet bei Aufträgen, bei Ausschreibungen, auch mit eigenen neuen Ideen reinzugehen, ins LV und abzugeben. Das heißt Sondervorschläge, Nebenangebote. Jahrzehntelang ist es umstritten gewesen, immer wieder eingeschränkt und über die Rechtsprechung schlichtweg dann ausgeschlossen worden. Aus meiner Sicht wurde unseren Firmen damit konsequent Innovation eigentlich abgewöhnt. Und das war für alle ein Fehler. Einer der wenigen Punkte, wo ich Europa nicht kritisiere, ist, dass diese Nebenangebote, Sondervorschläge wieder über Europarecht ins deutsche Recht zurückgekommen sind. Kleine Anmerkung. BIM, die Digitalisierung ganz allgemein. Ich sage, BIM ist nur das Flaggschiff. Es ist, sage ich mal, das, über wo alle reden. Die Digitalisierung aber ganz allgemein der Baubranche nimmt Geschwindigkeit auf und es bringt uns sehr rasch nach vorne. Wir merken, und das sehe ich an den vielen jungen Gesichtern hier im Auditorium, dass die Branche auch wieder attraktiver wird durch die Technisierung, durch die Digitalisierung und das freut uns natürlich sehr. Und deswegen sind wir auf diesem Kurs Deswegen möchten wir diesen Kurs auch vorantreiben und deswegen möchten wir über BIM und andere Digitalisierungsprozesse die Produktivität in der Baubranche voranbringen und erhöhen. Deswegen lernen wir auch gerne. Wir, ich hoffe, dass ich da aus Ihrer Seele spreche, dass wir nicht alles wieder im deutschen Geist neu erfinden müssen, sondern auch an Best Practice Beispielen, wie andere das machen, uns orientieren können und lernen können von denen, die es schon machen. Wir müssen das natürlich auf unserem Bereich, auf Verrota, adaptieren, aber der Weg ist klar vorgegeben, die Digitalisierung schreitet auch in der Baubranche voran und wir möchten diesen Prozess gerne fördern. Und deswegen sind wir sehr stolz, we are very proud to have you here today, Professor Ma, to show us a little bit what you do in China about BIM and how we can learn, how we can adopt to the situation and how we can proceed on our way in digitalization in the German construction industry. Heute war ja groß, auch in den deutschen Medien, die Eröffnung der Brücke zwischen Macau und Hongkong. Eins der großen Projekte in China, Flughafen, Peking, viele andere Dinge, die 
in Rekordzeit gebaut werden. Ich bin mir nicht immer sicher, ob das alles nur am BIM liegt oder auch an anderen Umständen, aber auch das werden wir heute wahrscheinlich hören. Herzlichen Dank fürs Kommen, herzlichen Dank an die Technik, an Professor Petzold dann für die Einführung zur Persönlichkeit von Professor Ma. Und ich wünsche uns einfach viel Vergnügen und einen guten Erfolg dieser Premiere, einerseits live im Oscar von Miller Forum, aber andererseits gestreamt auf Facebook von der Technik. Auch da zieht die Digitalisierung bei der Bauindustrie ein. Herzlich willkommen und viel Spaß bei dieser Veranstaltung. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich freue mich heute wirklich insbesondere Professor Ma, Kollegen Ma vorstellen zu dürfen, den ich seit vielen Jahren kenne und dass ich hier auch das Thema Digitalisierung, BIM in China einführen darf. So und wenn man heutzutage sich auf so eine Rede vorbereitet, googelt man natürlich, so habe ich natürlich auch gegoogelt, ich habe Google befragt zum Thema BIM in China und habe plötzlich einen Eintrag bekommen, BIM in China 1955. So, jetzt ist natürlich in der langen Geschichte von China, gibt es ganz viele Erfindungen, Buchdruck, äh, es gibt den Kompass, der erfunden wurde, es wurde das Papier erfunden. Jetzt natürlich die Frage, BIM in China 1955. Ich habe es ein bisschen näher dann mal angeschaut und BIM in China ist nicht unbedingt BIM in unserem Kontext. Das heißt, BIM ist hier ein Roman, ein BIM ist sozusagen ein junger, junger Mensch, ein Junge, der viele Abenteuer in China hat. So, und jetzt natürlich hat das natürlich wiederum direkten Bezug mit uns. Manchmal ist es sehr abenteuerlich, was so über BIM alles berichtet wird. Auf der, anderen, auf der einen Seite, was in den Medien, manchmal auf Symposien berichtet wird. Auf der anderen Seite ist natürlich BIM auch, hat mit Mut zu tun. Abenteuer haben mit Mut zu tun. Das heißt, wir müssen auch den Mut haben, was Neues einzuführen, was Neues zu etablieren und auch Prozesse zu ändern. So, China kenne ich jetzt schon seit 15 Jahren, bin fast jährlich einen Monat in China und möchte sozusagen, bevor ich Kollegen Ma dann einführe, Sie ein bisschen mit auf die Reise nehmen, auch auf meine letzte Reise, die ich im September hatte, war fünf Wochen in China, um China und auch die Digitalisierung in unserem Kontext Ihnen etwas näher zu bringen. Also gelandet bin ich in China. Gelandet bin ich in Peking, hatte in der ersten Woche Treffen mit Kollegen Ma, was wir jährlich durchführen, über Lehre und Forschung uns auszutauschen, auch mit Kollegen von der Architektur. Dann ging es weiter in den Süden, in die Provinz Guangzhou, wurde eben schon erwähnt, da ist in der Nähe Hongkong, die neue Brücke, ist eine Sonderwirtschaftszone und in den vergangenen 20 Jahren hat sich dort eine als rückständig geltende Provinz immens entwickelt zur Hightech-Zone der Welt, insbesondere in der Verbrauchsindustrie, aber auch in den Baustoffen, wie zum Beispiel Huawei ist dort einer der großen Player. Viele internationale Firmen sind dort, so auch bayerische und deutsche Firmen, mit denen ich mich sonst eigentlich immer da getroffen habe, dem Stammtisch. Es gibt in China überall deutsche Stammtische, ob das in Peking, in Shanghai oder in Hongkong ist oder in der Provinz. Diesmal leider nicht, der Termin war schon vorbei, der nächste Termin ist im November, aber ich habe einige Firmen getroffen und war dort zu Besuch, unter anderem hier in einer bayerischen Firma aus der Oberpfalz. Für mich sehr interessant war, wie dort Management- und Organisationsstrukturen aufgebaut wurden für diese Niederlassung. Das heißt, wo deutsche Standards eingesetzt werden, wo aber auch chinesische Standards eingesetzt werden und das in einen interkulturellen Kontext. Dann ging es in derselben Provinz weiter an die South Chinese University of Technology, selbe Provinz, auch einen Vortrag gehalten, mit Kollegen unterhalten und wer jetzt des Chinesischen mächtig ist, kann es lesen. Interessant war für mich dort, dass die großen Universitäten, ob das die Tsinghua ist in Peking, ob das die Tongxi ist in Shanghai oder ob das eben die South Chinese University ist, es gibt Architectural Design Institutes. Hier eben das Architectural Design and Research Institute der South Chinese University of Technologies. Die, diese Institute sind in unserem Kontext an Institute, an den Universitäten, das heißt die Kollegen, PhD-Studenten und Masterstudenten arbeiten dort auch und diese Institute agieren als Architektur- und Planungsbüros. 
Die Skala in China ist immer ein bisschen größer. Hier an der South Chinese University ca. 1000 Mitarbeiter. Und, auch interessant, es sind sogenannte Klasse A Institute. A bedeutet, sie dürfen in ganz China bauen. B bedeutet in der Provinz, C und D in der Stadt oder in dem Distrikt. A meint aber auch, dass alle Gebäude über 50 Meter nur diese Institute planen dürfen. Oder ein anderes Kriterium ist über 20.000 Quadratmeter Grundfläche. Hier als Beispiel in Guangzhou das IFC. Es hat nichts mit unserem IFC zu tun, also nicht Industry Foundation Classes. Es ist das International Finance Center mit, jetzt muss ich schauen, 239 Meter Höhe. Platz 12 in der Welt, Platz 5 in China, aktuell Platz 1 in Guangzhou. Oder auch von diesem Institut geplant, der chinesische Pavillon 2010 in Shanghai zur Expo. Vor allen Dingen interessant war dann in den Gesprächen mit den Kollegen, dass am Ende des Entwurfsprozesses BIM-Modelle abgegeben werden müssen. Es wird zwar nicht mit der BIM-Methodik vollständig gearbeitet, aber am Schluss steht ein BIM-Modell, was für die nächsten Planungsschritte hier herangezogen werden kann. So, dann ging es weiter in dieselbe äh, nach Xi'an zu einer Konferenz, der National Conference on Architectural Technologies in Education and Research, ebenfalls einen Vortrag gehalten zur Digitalisierung und Interdisziplinarität. Interessant war natürlich, die Konferenz auch mitzunehmen, das heißt die Beiträge. Ich habe mal hier einige Beiträge. Ich glaube, die meisten von uns können BIM lesen. Ich kann jetzt noch mehr durchblättern. Und der Rest ist mir natürlich ein bisschen schwierig zu lesen gewesen. Und so bekommt natürlich das Wort Fachchinesisch eine neue Bedeutung. Und wenn wir sozusagen auch deutsche und englische Texte lesen, ist doch sehr viel Fachchinesisch drin. Also Glossars verstehen wir manchmal auf unseren deutschen Texten nicht, weil sie wiederum mit Fachbegriffen untermauert sind. Also wir mystifizieren auch teilweise die Methodik BIM, die auch manchmal sehr einfach zu beschreiben ist. So, dann ging es wieder nach Peking zurück. Da hatte ich mehrere Treffen mit Kollegen Ma, unter anderem ein Promoventenkolloquium. Wir betreuen Promoventen seit einigen Jahren hier an seiner Universität, der Tsinghua University, 1911 gegründet. Aktuell über 20 Schools, das heißt über 20 Fakultäten. Und die Tsinghua University zählt zu den Top-Universitäten im nationalen und internationalen Kontext. Es sind ca. 15.000 Undergraduate, also Bachelorstudenten, ungefähr 25.000 Master- und PhD-Studenten. Das System ist dort ein bisschen anders. 7.300 akademische Mitarbeiter und, jetzt kommt eine Zahl, 3.440 Professuren. Aber das System ist ein bisschen anders, das heißt, die Full-Professuren sind ungefähr so ähnlich wie bei uns an der Universität. So, nun zu Kollegen Ma. Er studierte Bauingenieurwesen an der Tsinghua Universität, promovierte 1992 in Japan und seit 1993 forscht und lehrt er an der Tsinghua University School of Civil Engineering. Und seit 2003 ist er Full-Professor an der Universität in Peking. In Lehre und Forschung widmet sich Kollege Ma dem Themenfeld Digitalisierung im Bauwesen und insbesondere dem Themengebiet BIM. Er hat die Entwicklung der digitalen Technologien im Baubereich in den letzten Jahren nicht nur begleitet, sondern auch stark geprägt. Mehr als 50 Forschungsprojekte im Bereich der Digitalisierung, mehr als 18 Bücher, mehr als 200 wissenschaftliche Veröffentlichungen. Er ist stellvertretender Vorsitzende der Computer Application Branch der China Civil Engineering Society. Er ist stellvertretender Vorsitzender des Fachausschusses für Building Information Modeling. Im internationalen Kontext ist er in der renommierten internationalen Zeitschrift Automation and Construction im Editorial Board, um jetzt hier nur einige zu nennen, sonst könnte ich jetzt hier noch ganz weit mehr nennen. Und weiterhin ist er offizieller Berichterstatter für die chinesische Staatsregierung. Er war in der Erstellung von Dokumenten über die Anwendung von Informationstechnologien in der Bauindustrie für die Zentralregierung Chinas beteiligt. Er fertigt hier jährlich Industriereports auch an über die Anwendung der Informationstechnologien im Hochbau, organisiert zahlreiche Veranstaltungen und Symposien und für mich persönlich, er hat eine Exkursion zum neuen Flughafen in Peking im Süden organisiert. 
So, das sind ein paar Impressionen, wenn man dort das Ganze sich nähert, Kräne über Kräne, Kilometer weit. Die Ausmaße sind leicht in der Skala größer als bei uns. Das Gesamtprojekt sind 14 Milliarden Dollar veranschlagt. Die Gestaltung hat, hat DIT Architecture übernommen. Es wird einer der größten Hauptterminals der Welt, 700.000 Quadratmeter Fläche in Form eines Seesterns. Die Bauarbeiten, und das ist dann wichtig für die nächste Folie, begannen 2014. Geplant sind acht Stadtbahnen, Kapazität 100 bis 130 Millionen Passagiere. Zum Terminal gehört auch ein Verkehrsknotenpunkt, der hier in diesem Projekt integriert ist, mit 80.000 Quadratmeter. Von hier aus sollen Hochgeschwindigkeitszüge und andere Eisenbahnverbindungen abgehen. Es ist geplant, mehrere Verbindungen in die Stadt Peking hinein, ungefähr 50, 60 Kilometer entfernt zum Südbahnhof und mit einer Fahrzeit dann von 30 Minuten. Und weiterhin sind noch geplant Verbindungen zum aktuellen Airport, dem International Airport und zu den Metropolregionen, die dort in dieser Region auftauchen. Weiterhin sind noch vier Express Highways geplant und werden auch ausgeführt und zu diesem Projekt gehört auch 150 Quadratkilometer Gewerbe- und Industriegebiet. So, so sieht das ungefähr aus. Das war sozusagen der Stand im September, Kollege Ma in der Mitte. Und man sieht es gleich, am 30. Juni nächsten Jahres soll das Ganze in Aktion treten. Das heißt, der Counter hat mich am meisten beeindruckt. Es sind dort sozusagen... Die Tage, die Stunde, die Minuten und die Sekunden. Die Sekunden sieht man hier. Es tickt wirklich nach unten. Keine Angst, ich werde keinen Bezug zu Bauvorhaben in Deutschland nehmen. Ich habe den Reset-Button nicht gefunden. Und das hat mich sozusagen sehr stark beeindruckt. Mein Counter geht jetzt auch langsam gegen Null. Das heißt, die einführenden Worte beende ich nun. Ich freue mich sozusagen, Kollegen Ma das Wort übergeben zu dürfen. Der Vortrag wird in Englisch sein. Im Nachgang wird es noch eine Diskussionsrunde geben. Dear Ma Chiang, a warm welcome in Munich, and I give the hand over to you to your speech, BIM in China. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, President Schmidt and Mr. Uh, Schneider for your kind invit invitation uh, so that I can stand here to give a presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Pezoid, for your kind introduction. Uh, the title of my presentation is Beam Application to Building a Construction in China. Uh, just uh, a moment ago, the organizer used a uh, very short title, Beam in China. I think it's better, but both convey the same uh, meaning. Uh, it's about the application of beam technology in China. Uh, Professor Pezzai introduced my university. I don't need to uh, tell more about this. Uh, our university is situated in Beijing. It's one of the top universities in China, and it is also a well-ranked university in the world. Uh, our campus have very good sceneries. If you have a chance to come to Beijing, please visit our university. Then before my presentation, I'd like to introduce my background. Professor Pezoid introduced, and uh, I add some details. Actually, I graduated from the Department of Civil Engineering, Tsinghua University, in 1986. And then I went to Japan to study, to continue to study civil engineering, where I finished my master degree and the doctor degree. In 1993, I returned to Tsinghua University. I joined the Department of Civil Engineering to teach. 
and the research on the application of computer uh, technology in civil engineering. Then let me turn to the presentation. This is the agenda of my presentation. First of all, I think you, uh, want, you want to know how big is the Chinese building construction industry. So that uh, I'd like to list up some big data about Chinese construction industry. Then I think you want to know the overall situation of beam application in China. Then I will um, enter the second point overview on beam application in China. Then to be understandable for you, I'd like to give three beam application examples. Uh, all the examples are about uh, beam application in large projects, including uh, the project of uh, new airport, new international airport that Professor uh, Pesai mentioned. The application should be supported by research and innovation. So the next point I'm going to introduce is the research and innovation relevant to BIM in China. Uh, finally, I give the conclusion. The big data about Chinese uh, construction industry. First of all, I give the gross output value and the growth rate of construction industry in China in the past 10 years. You will see the gross output value is uh, uh, increasing tendency. And uh, the, in, uh, the growth rate uh, uh, varies uh, depending uh, on the years. So the increase tendency is actually due to the rapid economic growth of a China economy. Now let, uh, let us uh, focus on the number of uh, firms and the growth rate of uh, construction industry in China in the past 10 years. You will also see an increase in number of uh, construction firms. Next, the number of practitioners and the growth rate of uh, uh, construction industry in China in the past 10 years. You will see generally uh, it has been increasing up to now. Uh, finally, the construction completion area and the growth rate of con con uh, construction industry in China you will also see an uh, increase in tendency, but uh, actually it is coming into a flat stage during the past uh, four years. Okay, uh, you can't remember all these um, uh, numbers, but uh, uh, I think you are uh, uh, concerned about the comparison. The comparison between uh, China and Germany I just uh, compare, compare some uh, relative uh, aspects. First, uh, the comparison uh, of uh, population. Uh, the ratio is 1 to 17. Second is the gross output value comparison, also 1.17. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it has some special meaning. What's the meaning? If you say that the uh, uh, Chinese construction industry is developing very quickly, you can also say uh, German construction industry is also developing very quickly. Why? Because 
the gross output value per capita is exactly the same. Next uh, ratio is the gross rate of uh, the, the gross rate of gross uh, output uh, value, uh, the ratio is 1 to 1.37. Next, the uh, number of firms, the ratio is 1 to 5. It means uh, the number of firms in construction industry in China is five times that in Germany. And the last one, the uh, number of practitioners, 1 to 22. If you consider the previous uh, value of uh, gross output, you will uh, understand that the productive, uh, productivity in Germany is higher uh, in, than in China uh, generally. Okay, uh, that's the first point I presented, uh, uh, how big is the uh, Chinese conduction industry. Next, I'll give an overview uh, on beam application in China. Uh, this slide shows the uh, major milestones of beam application and development in China. The applica beam application in China can be traced back to uh, 2004 when Autodesk Corporation introduced their beam software and organized the publication of a series of during the 10th five-year uh, plan, 11th uh, five-year plan, 12th uh, five-year plan, and now it's uh, 13. Uh, five years plan. And uh, the government also initiated the uh, po uh, policy making project, standard making project. In the uh, industry side, uh, with the introduction of BIM uh, con uh, concept, uh, BIM has been used in the Beijing Olympic Games uh, venue projects in around uh, 2008, and then in the Shanghai Expo uh, uh, venue projects around uh, uh, 2010. Uh, among all these uh, major events, I have been involved as the colored one. So what government policies uh, uh, has, uh, has, uh, have been uh, issued? Uh, there are mainly uh, three policies. Uh, one policy is the development uh, outline of construction IT for the year of uh, uh, 2011 to, to, uh, to uh, 15. So that's, uh, that corresponds to the 12 uh, uh, 12 is a five-year plan. Uh, next is the policy address on promoting application of building information modeling. Uh, that's between the previous uh, outline and then the next outline, and that corresponds uh, correspond to the uh, 11, uh, 13th uh, five-year plan. Uh, in all these three policy uh, making, uh, three uh, policy making projects, I have acted as the key experts. With the advocation of the uh, government, uh, a lot of uh, projects uh, uh, have used uh, beam technology up to now. Uh, as a uh, Illustration, I just show you uh, the number of projects adopting BIM. As reflected in BIM contests, I list up three BIM contests. All of them are national 
beam contests. And the first contest is organized by China Exploration and Design Association. Uh, it was initiated in 2009. And uh, up to now, uh, I listed in a number of uh, projects that applied uh, in the beam contests. Uh, you see, the re in recent beam contests, the number uh, the applied uh, projects uh, uh, have uh, has exceeded uh, 500. Uh, so each uh, contest uh, exceeded uh, 500 projects. And the next one is the uh, is organized by China. Cons uh, uh, Construction Industry Association, which is uh, mainly for the uh, construction project. Uh, also, similar uh, uh, figures. And the third is organized by China Graphics Society. It is uh, a little bit more academic. You see similar tendency. It is said that in China now, each year, we have more than 20 beam contests. Many projects are applying to attend the beam contests. So this give you, uh, gives you uh, a concept of the number of projects adopting a beam in China. Then you may ask, how about the general uh, situation? To say, how about uh, the uh, companies uh, adopting BIM in various uh, stages? Uh, to understand, understand this, I just show uh, two charts. Uh, the first chart uh, shows uh, the result from a questionnaire where we uh, got uh, 140, uh, 400, uh, 1,400 uh, uh, 1, uh, replies. According, uh, so this was carried out in 2015. According to this chart, you may understand about 10% of the construction companies already are using BEAM in every project. And about uh, 26, they have used BIM in the trial projects. And uh, only about 26% uh, 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 have no plan to uh, adopt uh, BIM technology. As far as the BIM uses uh, are concerned, uh, we understand from this chart that the top three beam uses uh, have been the bidding plant uh, simulation, the calculating uh, the 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 uh, takeoff, the quantity takeoff, and the clash detection. I wonder uh, if you are familiar with BIM. So can I have an um, interaction? So those who have been familiar with, with BIM, please raise your hand. OK, I see. Thank you. So uh, for those you understand the BIM, uh, uh, you are familiar with BIM, you must understand the beam uses. Uh, for those you are not familiar, you um, must not be familiar with the beam uses. And no problem, I will explain that later. Uh, then I'll give you uh, some concept in another view. That's the concept of, of uh, major contractors. Uh, their adoption of BIM in China. Uh, 
I will mention uh, several uh, companies. All these companies uh, are involved in the um, example projects that I will uh, talk about later. So first, the pro uh, first uh, uh, major contractor is the China State Construction Engineering Corporation. This is a colossal uh, company which uh, owns uh, uh, the employee of uh, uh, 200, uh, 250,000 uh, employees. Uh, according to uh, uh, their data, by 2017, already over 3,000 projects. Um, in those projects, they have uh, applied B. Next, uh, I'd like to uh, take the third Bureau of the company. Uh, as an example, uh, it's a, a very uh, outstanding company and uh, it proposed try before uh, buildings when they de uh, deal with uh, complex, uh, complicated uh, com project, uh, projects. And the third is uh, Shanghai Construction Company. It advocated uh, the concept of digital construction. They have done a lot of uh, uh, research and development work in this aspect. Uh, the fourth is uh, Beijing Urban Construction. The company began to apply beam technology since uh, 2004. And uh, uh, next is the East Bureau of CIS, uh, the, the, the big company, CSCEC. This company applied the beam for every project since 2015. And the last one is the Beijing Construction, which applied the beam technology in regi residential projects even. In addition to the pure application of beam technology, beam, uh, beam technology have been, uh, has been uh, used uh, by integrating with other technologies. Uh, for example, project management, uh, cloud computing, Internet of Things, digital manufacturing, intelligent total station, uh, GIS, uh, 3D scanning, a virtual reality 3D printing and the interior positioning. Uh, Professor Pesoit uh, mentioned that uh, I have uh, edited uh, some industry report. Actually, during the past six years, I edited uh, six industry reports, uh, all related to uh, beam application. So in 2013, uh, first one is uh, uh, information management and uh, beam application and development. Uh, In-depth beam application and development. Uh, internet application and development. Uh, smart construction site uh, application and development. And uh, the uh, recent one is uh, big data application development, uh, which uh, has been uh, issued uh, this year. That's my second point. The third point uh, is beam application in large construction projects. I will take three large construction projects as examples. The first uh, large construction project is Shanghai Tower. Uh, it's the highest building in Shanghai. The second is City uh, Tower. It's uh, the highest uh, uh, building in Beijing. And the third is, as mentioned, the new international airport in Beijing. About the Shanghai Tower. It has 
132 stories. It cost uh, it costed uh, more than two billion U.S. dollars. It's uh, the project started in 19, uh, 2008 and uh, finished in 2006. Uh, it uh, took around uh, eight years. It's uh, the first skyscraper in China using beam for its life cycle. And this shows the technical framework of beam application of the project. Uh, some uh, Chinese characters are mixed inside. Uh, please don't worry, I will explain that later. Uh, you just uh, uh, take notice uh, on the design phase, uh, construction phase, and uh, operation phase. Uh, beam technology has been uh, used uh, in all three phases. Actually, uh, in May, I visited uh, uh, the building, uh, and uh, they showed us the, uh, their maintenance system based on beam technology. In this uh, figure, uh, you see uh, the name of various uh, um, beam-based uh, software. And then I show you the beam uses. Beam uses means uh, in what phase and uh, in what point you use beam technology uh, to facilitate the engineers. In the construction, uh, in the design phase, they used uh, B uh, for parametric design, visualized design, sustainable design, and uh, uh, collaboration, collaborative design in this project. In the construction phase, they used for construction coordination, 4D simulation, construction design, management of components, and uh, ac acceptance uh, check. Uh, in the last uh, beam uses, they used uh, 3D scanning and the beam. By 3D scanning, they get the actual, actual uh, dimension, and uh, uh, by the uh, beam model, they have the uh, designed uh, uh, dimension, they use computer programs to compare both uh, automatically. So what's the major benefits of applying Beam in this, uh, in this uh, large project? The owner of the project uh, summarized uh, several points. I just uh, picked up the most important one. The owner think 85% of reworks have been reduced. It costs 60 million US dollars. So it's a big money, even expressed, uh, uh, even compared with the two million uh, total cost. Second example is the uh, city tower. It's the highest uh, building in Beijing. It has 115 uh, stories. The start time is uh, uh, January 2000, uh, uh, 2014, and the finish, day, uh, finish uh, is expected uh, by the end of this year, uh, totally around uh, five years. Uh, by learning from the uh, Shanghai Tower project, the owner of this project required beam application in the life cycle of the building. Uh, in this process, about uh, 70, uh, 70 stakeholders uh, established uh, uh, beam teams uh, who collaborated uh, each other. In the construction phase, over 120 people 
have been involved in the BIM application. The objective of BIM application for the project is to max, uh, minimize, uh, maximize uh, the reuse of BIM model and uh, the uh, use BIM in the management phase uh, to raise the building uh, quality. Uh, here I show the uh, beam teams and uh, beam models uh, for design. Actually, the, this project uh, uh, was designed uh, by a design team. Uh, you, uh, you can see the name of the, uh, the team members. Uh, for example, KPF, Arab, uh, BIAD. Uh, uh, the design team uh, is uh, consisted uh, uh, from uh, both domestic and international. How about the beam application in construction phase? This shows the organization uh, chart. The applic beam application is uh, being in charge uh, of by the general engineer, uh, engineer of the project. Uh, under the general engineer, there are two branches. Uh, one branch is uh, beam management uh, uh, section, and another is in the traditional uh, functional uh, sections. Uh, the beam management section uh, is established uh, for the uh, beam application. application. There are uh, from the uh, general contractor side, uh, there are uh, six people. And uh, the general contractor also pick up uh, the engineers from the functional uh, sections, uh, totally eight people. And also, the general contractor require, ask the, the uh, special, uh, specialty contractors uh, uh, to uh, dispatch people to uh, take uh, in charge of uh, the take charge of the beam application. In the following, I will give some uh, typical beam uses uh, in this uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, first of all, the detailed design using beam. Uh, in this uh, project, uh, the beam is applied to all specialties. Uh, and the beam models were required uh, to be synchronized uh, to the design drawings. In the application, beam is uh, applied to the detailed design and uh, outputting uh, drawings uh, from the model, plus the manufacturing uh, in the case of a steel, structure, uh, steel structure and uh, uh, curtain wall. I show some uh, uh, design, um, detailed design of uh, specialty uh, uh, section. This shows the uh, detailed design for MEP. Uh, in this process, they have established the component uh, uh, they have an established component and uh, uh, with, uh, uh, they combine the component with uh, uh, systematic uh, naming uh, conventions, which is useful for the maintenance of the uh, uh, building. Uh, the detailed design for decoration uh, uh, using beam they use the, uh, the uh, beam software to carry out the parametric design. And uh, they, the, uh, they confirmed uh, the components of uh, the uh, decoration. And then the detailed design for the curtain wall using beam. Uh, now, uh, in this project, the curtain wall is not uh, uh, flat, so it is curved. 
so that they have to use beam. And uh, the beam model uh, has been uh, used for the uh, numerical control uh, machine uh, for manufacturing. This shows the coordination and the clash detection. This is a typical beam use in this project. Uh, similarly, uh, it uh, has been used uh, widely. And here I show some statistics about the uh, comprehensive coordination uh, by using beam in the form of class de detection. Uh, you see there are uh, two, uh, two stages. The first stage uh, is just, uh, just for a specialty, and the second stage is for um, comprehensive uh, coordination, uh, means that uh, all the detailed design model, uh, have been, uh, models have been obtained in the first stage, and uh, this detailed uh, model are all uh, precise and uh, they are used uh, for the uh, comprehensive co uh, co uh, coordination. Uh, the next uh, beam use is construction simulation. Uh, uh, for some uh, special process, uh, they have used beam to uh, carry out the simulation. For example, the tall crown construction uh, because uh, in the, for the tall crown it includes the uh, structure, the curtain wall, the removal of uh, steel platform. Actually, they established a steel, uh, steel platform to carry out construction so that uh, at the top you have to remove uh, the steel platform and also remove uh, the tall cranes. Uh, the top cranes uh, are installed in, uh, on the top of the, uh, the steel frame uh, platform. And uh, they use beam also for the uh, manufacturing, for prefabrication. And uh, they use the sc uh, 3D scanning for comparing with the beam model uh, to uh, carry out the quality inspection. I don't know uh, what's your impression. Actually, what I want to say to you is that they have used all the uh, known beam uses, all the uh, points for the beam uses. So what's the benefits? Here, I'd like to Introduce, uh, I'd like to introduce two benefits. The first benefit is uh, when they use BIM, uh, they use the model to discuss various possibilities to improve the design. Uh, for example, in the design of MEP, they use the, they consider use the same uh, integrated uh, fan coil in, uh, and uh, they shorten the width of the window seal. So by uh, doing this, 2,000, uh, uh, 4,200 usable areas was increased uh, for the whole building. So it's in the CBD uh, area. So the, the price is very high. Uh, a rough estimate is that uh, only this point can save 112 million US dollars. Next benefit. Uh, also concerned uh, uh, with the MEP uh, uh, design, they try to move the MEP roots into the uh, tubular uh, 
shaft wheel and the equipment space so that they can uh, earn some useful uh, areas. Uh, in the order of uh, 25 uh, square meters uh, per floor, totally 112 uh, 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 stories, so that they obtained uh, 3,000 square meters uh, this way. It also uh, saves a lot of money. The order is about uh, uh, 80 million US dollars. Uh, let me turn to the third uh, large project. That's the new international airport, uh, uh, Beijing. So here are some uh, uh, facts about the uh, airport. Uh, this new airport uh, consists of uh, uh, two terminals. Uh, in the first phase, uh, only the f Terminal 1 uh, will be built. Uh, the start of the project is uh, uh, March uh, 2016, and uh, it will be finished uh, by uh, June 30 next year, so totally about three years. Uh, there are uh, four runways uh, for the first Terminal 1 and the first uh, uh, phase project. And uh, it can accommodate uh, 72 million passengers uh, per year. In the uh, terminal, there are six uh, connections, including subways, uh, railways, high-speed railways, and uh, normal railway lines. I'll describe some uh, beam uses in the project. The uh, first thing is uh, uh, Terminal 1. Uh, the, the size, you must be concerned about the size. The size is around uh, 500 meters and then 500 meters. So totally uh, over 8,000 foundation piles and uh, over 1,000 retaining piles was used. So the problem is how to manage this, uh, the construction of these piles. They have developed uh, the information management system. First of all, is they establish the B model, then they use this management system to manage the construction of the, of the piles. For each pile, there should be uh, data, and uh, all the data can be collected by using mobile, mobile phone, and it can be checked on desktop computer. Second, I'd like to show the construction of uh, steel trestle for horizontal transportation. Since the area is very big, the tall cranes, although there are totally 29 tall cranes uh, used in this whole area, but uh, it's not enough for the horizontal transportation. What to do? So they decided to, uh, uh, to construct two steel trestle uh, for the horizontal construction. Here shows the shape. This is one and another. So this shows the time bit of the trans steel transistor. So this is one uh, steel transistor. So this is the whole construction site. Um, in, uh, in the most dense uh, time, over 8,000 workers was working in this construction site together. Uh, in the design of this trestle, they used beam to calculate uh, in, uh, in balance of uh, the 
uh, transportation capacity. Uh, next, I'd like to show some apl beam application uh, used in uh, special techniques. First of all, I'd like to show the uh, simulation or construction of stiffening, st stiffening uh, structures. Uh, so in the building, uh, there are many complicated joints. So how to construct uh, the, in such joints? So they established uh, the model and they um, make the movie for the uh, construction process. Um, give you some uh, specific figures. Uh, the contractor hired uh, five consulting firms uh, to establish model and uh, uh, use beam uh, for, for them. Uh, although they have a beam a team uh, themselves, they hired uh, extra uh, five uh, uh, consulting uh, firms uh, which uh, uh, specialize in the beam application. This shows the another uh, complicated uh, uh, joint. Uh, the upper structure of the terminal building is uh, 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 vibration isolated. So the isolation, uh, uh, the isolation bearing is a very uh, special uh, joint. Uh, when you uh, construct this bond joint, uh, 25 steps are needed uh, to finish it. So they uh, use uh, the beam, uh, then show uh, each step uh, so that the worker can understand the process and they will not neglect uh, some uh, steps. This shows the simulation of a construction of a steel structure. Actually, the terminal structure uh, is based on the con concrete structure. Uh, totally seven uh, levels of concrete structure. And then they establish a columns on the concrete structure. As for example, the wedding process. And uh, after construction, they use the 3D uh, laser scanning uh, to get the point data of the whole roof structure. And then they uh, introduce the in software to compare with the beam model of the structure. What they did is uh, they uh, don't uh, just uh, compare uh, visually, but uh, they uh, compared the uh, coordinates of the each uh, sphere joints to see if the precision, uh, precision is uh, uh, good enough or not. And uh, um, when uh, Professor Pezzard and I visited the construction site uh, in recent time, uh, it has uh, entered the decoration phase. Uh, uh, for the decoration, because it is very complicated, uh, they established a special system. Uh, the system is beam based, and uh, they have uh, established uh, all the database based on beam. Uh, for uh, decoration, uh, for so that uh, uh, the information about the decoration can be easily uh, retrieved uh, uh, by using the system. So this is the information management system for the decoration phase. Okay, uh, in the third point, I just show you uh, three. Um, big project, large projects uh, that uh, 
that have adopted uh, beam technology. Uh, all these uh, beam uh, applications are supported by research and uh, innovations. Uh, I promised uh, to give you a concept of beam use. Uh, I, I, I want to explain it by using this slide. Uh, we know uh, beam means uh, 3D uh, geometric model uh, and uh, the uh, attribute data. This model have uh, some characteristics, including intuitive, uh, computable, uh, shareable, and manageable, only according to computer system, without the uh, interfering of uh, human. So this is the characteristics of the beam model. The so-called beam technology means to use these characteristics in the, uh, each phase of the life cycle of the projects so that three elements are necessary. They are beam uses. Beam uses means in what phase and what stage can the uh, beam, uh, uh, can the beam characteristic be uh, make use, uh, made use of. Supporting this are the BIM software and the BIM standard. Uh, as far as the research and innovation is concerned, all these three aspects should be taken into account. Uh, uh, account. So in the following, I'd like to introduce the development of beam, uh, um, beam technology, uh, including the development of uh, beam uh, uh, software, beam uses, and uh, beam standards. Uh, first, uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce the, uh, beam, uh, uh, the development of beam uh, software in China. Theoretically, all existing BIM uses uh, have been supported by uh, BIM uh, softwares. But uh, considering their use in China, there are two situations. One situation is uh, for modeling, it's no problem. An existing uh, modeling software is applicable. But for application, it is problematic. The reason is that uh, the design standard and the construction standard are different. So in this case, we need to develop uh, uh, new uh, BIM application softwares. In this process, an innovation can be introduced. Here, I give you uh, two examples. One example is done by us uh, in my laboratory. We developed a, a BIM-based software for construction cost estimation. So then in the beginning, we investigated the existing software for cost estimation. And for USA alone, we found the seven softwares. Uh, so can we use them in China, uh, China's practice? We know that we have to check the uh, standards. Then we uh, checked the Chinese standards, and uh, we found the standards are quite different. Uh, for example, the classification of the BQ items. In USA, they use master format and unit format, but in China, we use a combined view of these two, so that uh, it is hard, uh, it, it can hardly be uh, introduced uh, uh, in the uh, software. So that uh, in our project, we developed a uh, beam-based uh, uh, software for construction cost estimation that conforms to the Chinese standard. Uh, this shows the interface of the system. Then I can give you a movie. I just uh, state the characteristic of this uh, uh, software. Um, up to now, 
when we do cost estimation, we have to read the drawings, understand it, and then input, uh, inspect and input data into the uh, estimation software uh, to calculate. So by using BIM, we can avoid the human interference so that we use the design BIM model directly. So in this software, we input the design BIM model. And then uh, after we push uh, a bottle, it can, uh, the QB I, uh, items can be automatically generated. Next, we push another button, the, uh, the volumes, uh, the volumes of each uh, QB items can be uh, calculated uh, automatically. Then after that, in China, we use uh, quotas to calculate uh, the uh, detailed uh, price. So the quotas can be matched automatically. So what's the meaning of this? Means uh, thorough change of uh, industry, that is cons cons uh, cons uh, consulting industry. If we put this kind of software commercialized completely, uh, thousands of people uh, will lost their uh, work. So we have uh, developed the system and applied it in real project. Uh, at this, is, this stage, uh, it is semi-automatic, uh, but the, the risk in working efficiency is very uh, remarkable. A second example is from a, a company, the largest software vendor company in construction IT field. Uh, the company developed the BIM 5D project that uh, conforms to the Chinese standard. Now, BIM 5D is actually applicable uh, to the construction phase, and uh, the major functions uh, includes uh, it can in integrate multi, uh, multi specialty models. It can support uh, uh, the division of uh, flow portions and so on uh, in the construction phase. So that it will uh, fall uh, at a beam based tool for the refinement of construction projects. The major role of the uh, tool can be summarized as three centers. The first center is a model center. Uh, so this uh, software can accommodate all major model formats. Uh, and it is based on cloud computing. Uh, all the uh, Model formats, both domestic and uh, international, are all uh, spo supported. The second row is data, uh, data center. Uh, by this row, it means in the in the uh, software in the uh, in the tool, we can check every information through this friendly interface. The component, the process, the progress, BQ items, and so on. So, in that sense, uh, it acts as the data station of the project. Next row is application center. It provides functions for project bidding, project planning, project completion, and project organizing. It's also a multi-platform collaborative application. Uh, it supports the work of the project team, and it provides a web uh, uh, cockpit, 
and uh, it also supports the uh, co uh, collaboration among different stakeholders uh, based on uh, cloud computing. Next, I'm going to the developmental beam uses. We know that uh, in 2010, uh, the Pennsylvania State University, USA, summarized uh, 25 beam uses uh, for building uh, construction projects. Uh, but uh, uh, with the time, we need to invent more beam uses to further uh, make use of uh, beam technology. So the expansion of beam uses can be called uh, advanced beam. New beam uses uh, um, have been uh, proposed and the corresponding uh, software, uh, software uh, has been uh, developed uh, to verify uh, the uh, new beam uses. I'll give three examples. The first example is the potential beam uses for uh, eco-community. We all know green building. So eco-community is the equivalent uh, to the community. Uh, you know, in China, there is a real estate beam, and uh, all residence, uh, uh, residence, uh, residential buildings are uh, built in the form of community. So eco-community means uh, high-quality community construction. Uh, the, it is different from the green building because it has to consider more things, uh, including the uh, roads, the green land, uh, and so on. So uh, what about the beam uses? Can we find some new beam uses uh, uh, besides the beam uses for uh, uh, building, single building. So this uh, has been uh, done in, this has been done in 2008 uh, when a company uh, asked me uh, to, to do a research project. Uh, we just uh, analyzed uh, the uh, stages and the requirements uh, and the way uh, summarize the beam uses uh, in the eco-community uh, projects. Totally 21 beam uses. So this is something uh, at the same time with the Pennsylvania State University. But uh, since this is uh, um, um, done to, um, with the company, uh, we could not uh, publish it at that time. The second example is a beam-based application for management of construction quality. We know construction quality is a very important issue. And the current method for managing construction quality is like this. The stakeholders check each process according to the standards. Uh, to be specific, the Contractors will self-check each product of each process. After that, they inform the uh, supervision side to uh, recheck. Then uh, after the recheck, uh, the supervision side will decide if they will ask uh, uh, the contractor to continue or not. For some important uh, process, the owner will also attend. So in all the process, the data should be recorded in some uh, paper form. So what's the problem? There are three problems. First problem is in the construction side, they have to use paper form and to record uh, the data manually. And uh, after they return to the office, they have to summarize the data and then input into computer because they are required to do so. So in 
This sense that working efficiency is very low. First problem. Second problem is uh, vulnerable to the missing inspection. According to the standards, uh, many items need to be checked. But uh, for some inexperienced uh, uh, manager, uh, managerial staffs, uh, it's very hard for them to remember. Oh, so sometimes there are some leak uh, due, to, due to the inexperience and the carelessness. And the third problem is uh, vulnerable to the uh, faking data. Because uh, all the documents are needed and uh, uh, it will be checked. Since they have uh, uh, not uh, done that, they uh, pretend to, to have done that. Uh, so there are some uh, faking data. So we consider we make use of BIM to solve the problems. So we uh, have done the system analysis. Uh, we uh, decided to develop a, a system that supports the uh, stakeholders to carry out the whole process of the con uh, construction quality uh, management, including the uh, plan, uh, planning, the execution, and uh, uh, management. So that we have to base our system on the uh, web, and we uh, have to uh, support the uh, mobile uh, terminal. We have developed the system, and uh, this uh, slide shows the interface of our system. You see some uh, yellow point. Uh, it means the checkpoint uh, that was uh, generated automatically based on the beam model according to the uh, construction uh, quality management standard. Uh, how to use it in construction site? Uh, just to show you a short movie. Um, in the construction site, uh, before they go to the construction side, they have uh, generated the checkpoint uh, automatically, the uh, checkpoint and the check items automatically. So in the construction side, they just uh, select which floor they are going to inspect. Uh, and then they need to select uh, which uh, check items uh, to be checked. So. Uh, we use different color to distinguish the, uh, between the checked one and the unchecked one. Uh, so uh, he check an item, then the checkpoint will be displayed on the model. Please see here, uh, this uh, red block. What's this? So this is the positioning. It means the uh, inspector's place. When we um, walk along, around the road, we need a navigation system. When we check the construction quality, we also need navigation. So we used uh, interior positioning technology. So that we uh, walk here, and then we know uh, the column in front of us correspond to which column in the model. Otherwise, the model is complex, and uh, in the site, it is very hard to find the correspondence between the model and the uh, real uh, projects. And uh, by clicking the points, uh, then we get the uh, form. We uh, check in the form uh, to input the data. And uh, all the data can be summarized automatically so that we can solve the, uh, the previously mentioned three problems. Of course, in the process, we uh, can uh, support the workflow, etc. And the third example is a beam based application for. Uh, optimized management or uh, precast uh, production. 
Uh, for the prefabricated uh, uh, building, we uh, produce the components in the factory. And uh, in the process, we can use beam to make plan and then um, monitor, uh, monitor the whole process. Uh, because of time limit, uh, I will not expand this uh, content. Uh, the third aspect is development of uh, beam standards. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, uh, chi in China, we have a different uh, uh, standard system. As far as beam standards uh, are concerned, uh, it is uh, similar. We can hardly to use the uh, foreign beam standards uh, directly. So that uh, uh, the government uh, have uh, initiated uh, the making of national beam standards. Up to now, uh, they have initiated uh, the making of six national uh, beam standards. Uh, uh, I used uh, uh, this uh, uh, arrow. Uh, actually, I, involved, uh, uh, I have been involved in uh, the making of these two uh, national beam standards. Uh, I will give you some more detail uh, by selecting a standard, the last standard, a construction beam standards. Um, of course, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, different uh, uh, contents. I just uh, take the beam uses as an example. Uh, in the uh, Pennsylvania State, uh, State University's uh, beam, beam uses uh, for construction phase, there was uh, eight beam uses. Um, but uh, in our standard, totally we have 19 uh, beam uses. Uh, why we have this? Uh, because we have summarized the uh, beam uses uh, in the practice of our uh, Chinese cons construction industry. Uh, so that in our standard, we uh, specified uh, 19 uh, beam uses for construction phase. So that's the uh, fourth point, and the last point is uh, construction. Uh, conclusion. Um, I, uh, as I mentioned, accompanied by the rapid development of uh, economy in China, uh, beam application in China has prevailed. Uh, this presentation overview the uh, beam application, followed by three typical application cases, research and innovations. Uh, future development of beam uses, uh, beam software and uh, beam standard, which is time consuming, is anticipated. That's all of my presentation. If you have uh, questions, you are welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ma, for this mm. precious and very um, detailed um, uh, presentation about BIM in China. Mm -hmm. Not only about, say, different applications which you can use for uh, BIM uh, or which different construction are realized.
a very good question. And I introduce uh, some uh, these projects. Uh, uh, in some uh, beam, uh, in some construction firms, they have required uh, every project uh, to use beam. Um, but uh, uh, depending on the complexity of the uh, construction project, uh, the beam uses uh, should be different. Uh, I know some uh, firms have uh, just uh, summarized the guidelines uh, uh, for selecting the right beam uses uh, according to the type of uh, a project. Um, as I mentioned, uh, even for uh, residential building project, which is uh, uh, much simpler than the uh, public uh, um, building project, uh, beam have been applied. Uh, beam technology has been applied in those projects. The key point is that um, you must uh, master all the beam pro uh, beam uses uh, first, and then um, you apply uh, try to apply it in a construction project before application. What they uh, often do is like this. They just uh, uh, analyze um, which beam uses is more applicable in this project and it can, be, it can, can be used to solve problems. Uh, after the analysis, they establish the execution plan. And uh, in the execution plan, they specify uh, what beam uses will be applied. Uh, by doing this way, they can apply uh, BIM as a tool to tackle the right problems so that uh, BIM technology can be efficiently uh, used. Okay. Thank you very much. Other questions? Um, just about the detail, uh, you said that uh, one of the main uh, um, applications, one of the main uh, expectations for, for BIM usage in China is in the bidding process. Now, bidding in, in Germany is one of those fields where we have uh, no clue at the moment. We, we do not yet understand how we can get a, a, an efficient bidding process which would also involve the production know-how into the, the project and it's very hard for us to, to imagine when the price for a, for a project can be defined and can be established in, in a bidding process. How do you use BIM in the bidding process in China? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned that uh, BIM technology is originally, uh, originally intended to be used in the life cycle of the uh, projects, including the planning, design, uh, construction, and uh, uh, maintenance. Um, I, uh, in my presentation, I explained uh, the beam uh, application mainly in the construction phase, uh, because I, I think um, uh, in this uh, federation, most uh, companies uh, uh, engaged in the construction of buildings. Um, but uh, um, the real situation is, uh, is uh, like this. The construction phase is also the hot area of BIM application. Uh, why? Uh, we all know that BIM was originally used in design phase. But up to now, the designers are not willing to use BIM in design phase because they consider the BIM application will lower their working efficiency. In a recent investigation uh, of mine, the designer told me uh, that uh, they have mastered the BIM, uh, the BIM technology and they can use the beam technology in their work very well. But uh, 
unless they are required to do so, they are not willing to do to do so because uh, the working efficiency of applying beam is only half of the working efficiency by using the traditional uh, software. I mean the 2D based uh, design software. Uh, so I think uh, this is a sh the sole aspect uh, of uh, uh, beam application. Um, that is uh, the designer uh, consider their working uh, working uh, uh, efficiency, so they are not willing. But uh, if r they really use uh, beam in con uh, in design, the application will increase the benefit of the owner. So that uh, the owner should pay uh, for the difference. But up to uh, up to now, unfortunately, the owner. Uh, is still not willing uh, to pay uh, to pay, so I think uh, it's a time pro of uh, it's a problem of time. So with time, the owner will realize the benefits uh, they can have uh, by uh, enforcing the uh, beam application in design phase. Uh, I think they will become willing to pay the difference so that. Uh, the design uh, designer will uh, become winning. So this is uh, one uh, one aspect. Another aspect is uh, we need to develop the uh, to develop more powerful design software uh, for beam application for design phase. Uh, especially in China now, the designer uh, when they use the design uh, the modeling software, the they, they can use it very well, but uh, if they use uh, some tools, because the tools are related to the uh, uh, standards, uh, Chinese standard, uh, but uh, up to now those tools uh, have not been um, uh, customized to uh, correspond to the Chinese standards, so that uh, they just uh, use it and they have to uh, do a lot of uh, extra work. So by developing the uh, design software, I think this problem can be solved so that the working efficiency for the designers can be raised uh, so that uh, the if uh, uh, both the situation occur, the owner support the uh, pay the difference and the, the uh, improvements on software uh, can raise their working efficiency, so the problem will be solved uh, finally. So that's uh, my opinion. Please, bitte ein paar Fragen. Können wir auch vielleicht auf Deutsch machen, dann versuchen wir mal zu übersetzen auf die Art und Weise, wenn, Sie, wenn das die Hemmschwelle ist, äh, hier auf Englisch eine Frage zu stellen. Findet BIM in China auch im Bereich von Tiefbauanwendungen? So, um, as uh, its name is short, uh, building information modeling. But uh, now it has been expanded uh, uh, to be used in other area. Um, uh, for example, the road, the railway, hydraulic engineering. Uh, in the case of China, I think uh, um, all these areas are uh, have began to use beam. In some area, they have uh, uh, used beam uh, uh, only next to the building industry. Uh, for example, hydraulic uh, engineering. Uh, as far as I know, they have applied uh, 3D design, which is a kind of beam. Uh, 
uh, many years ago. And they have developed their softwares. Uh, the name is not uh, Beam, but uh, actually they have done Beam uh, about 10 years ago. So uh, now in the um, Beam uh, contest, in which uh, I act as the screening uh, community member, uh, we also uh, we often uh, see many um, projects uh, uh, from the hydraulic engineering, uh, also from the uh, road and uh, uh, transportation. Uh, but the problem is that uh, sometimes uh, um, they have to use the uh, beam software for uh, building industry. For example, for the road and uh, for the uh, railway, uh, up to now, there are not so many uh, specialized software. Uh, there are some, but they are too expensive, so that they use uh, Revit uh, to carry out application in road and in uh, railway. That's my idea. Okay. I have one question. Um, Professor Betzold um, uh, uh, mentioned IFC on one of his slides, uh, and but on new slides, no one there was mentioned as a, as a interface IFC. There's a reason because if you have such a big uh, construction project, how you have managed all this data? Uh, about the uh, management of the data. Uh, up to now, mainly we use the um, the uh, file format of the dedicated software. Uh, we manage the files uh, in certain uh, collaborative uh, platform. Uh, but the IFC is still uh, very important, although it is not major now. Uh, in China, uh, actually we are advocating IFC uh, I mentioned the uh, uh, six stand beam national beam standard, uh, which includes uh, the a standard that is uh, corresponding to IFC. Um, but uh, uh, the problem is that uh, we have uh, uh, very few uh, corresponding uh, softwares to supporting IFC. Um, uh, I know that uh, in Europe, uh, the uh, source vendors support IRC very well, but uh, uh, not in America and uh, not in China, because uh, the software vendor considered IRC is too complicated. Um, so uh, uh, on one hand, we try to introduce IRC. On the other hand, we try to uh, simplify IRC. Um, we just use uh, express language, uh, we just uh, to uh, construct a uh, um, uh, markup language based uh, 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 standard uh, to uh, specify some data. Um, but uh, I think uh, IFC is the, uh, is the direction. Okay. Professor Ma, one question from your slide. You show us uh, that international foreign standards from BIM can't be used in China. Uh, so you created own BIM standards. Where is the problem from your view uh, by building international standards when a real great large player uh, said we can use it? As far as the beam standard uh, is concerned, uh, still uh, we don't have an uh, international beam standard. We have the base of uh, beam international beam standard, uh, like IFC, like IDM, uh, like IFD. Uh, um, 
uh, if you specify to a certain country, you have to uh, do more things. For example, in the case of USA, uh, they have the national beam standard. Uh, the, uh, the latest version is uh, version three. Uh, so they, uh, uh, in the standard, they con uh, it consists of uh, uh, seven reference so a reference uh, standard <coughs> and eight uh, MVD standard and many practical document. Why? Because uh, the base of national standard is not enough. Uh, in the case of China, uh, we uh, have realized this, so that we want to uh, to uh, take uh, a form uh, that is uh, simple to learn and simple to use. Uh, but up to now, I don't think we uh, have been successful to do that. Uh, among the uh, six standards, uh, three standards uh, have been issued. And uh, uh, in lo among those three standards, I uh, took part in uh, the making of one standard and um, I acted as a key member. Uh, when we discuss, when we discuss, uh, I, 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 I uh, often say that uh, our standard uh, seemingly is uh, more specific, uh, we have more uh, uh, beam uses.